There we go. Lovely. Thank you very much, Pierre, and thank you, Martina, for going through the current situation with the current survey. I'll talk about what we're doing for the transformation of the survey, or I guess you could say the development of the new survey that will replace the current one. Uh, so I'm the head of the current Labour Force survey and heavily involved in the production of the new one. And uh, I'm preaching to the choir, but you know the LFS has existed for 50 years. It produces all sorts of outputs, uh, productions, not just cross-sectional, but some longitudinal aspects as well. And it has been evolving over the course of time to meet the different needs and shapes of society, developing over, developing over time the content of the questionnaire, the outputs that we're producing, the methodologies involved, the population characteristics involved, and trying to improve the effectiveness of the survey capability, so the way that we run the survey, the interviewers involved. And of course, the current transformation that we're going through is the next major step in doing so, so bringing us out of the proverbial dark ages with the phone and the paperwork, leading on to online surveys going forward. And speaking of the objectives of transforming the survey, forgive me, I probably have shown this to this audience before, but we're taking an online-first approach now uh, it's with an adaptive and responsive design, thanks to Maria's team and a lot of uh, development work going on. Uh, where we're trying to target the resources where they're going to be most effectively employed to maximise the response rates and the quality and the representativeness through a whole bunch of different mechanisms, notably on here putting about the uh, large overall sample size. So wave one on the TLFS is about seven times the current LFS. When you add everything together, all the different waves, we end up with a, a data set that's about three times the size at the moment. Uh, a more robust processing system, so using the, the latest technologies with Python and cloud and everything else to make a, a better production system so that are hopefully able to produce things more accurately and more quickly. Uh, in trying to introduce a modular design so we can add more question blocks into the questionnaire, make sure that we have data rotation put in there, make sure that we have the best possible questionnaire content that we can and trying to be more flexible. So as part of the development, making sure that we are up to date with all the questions that are relevant right now to the current policies, to the current society, and trying to build it so that we can change those questions more easily, more frequently as the changing needs of the economy and government policy demand. So that we'll hopefully be able to respond faster to some of these changes in future. Uh, future aims, so not right now, but looking into the future, trying to integrate much more with the administrative data, so things like tax records, uh, whatever information that we can get from other departments, whether it's HMRC or DWP or uh, some other departments that have lots of information, even business information being put in there for where you work, uh, all relevant and trying to increase the, the timeliness of the survey, so wherever possible, trying to uh, make sure that we can deliver this as quickly as possible. And thinking about the transformation of where we are at the moment, so this is up to May 2024. Now, there is a section of this diagram off the back side over there. This transformation has been going on since 2016, so when we first got some funding to start delivering this survey, and there was a lot of development work, a lot of activity happening since 2016 but focusing on the last couple of years because there has been a significant amount of active development out in the field now. We started the dual run officially back in February 2022, so that's when we had both the LFS and the TLFS running at the same time, and that's when we introduced telephone mode. So to your question earlier on, we added telephone mode onto what was previously just an online survey. The, we then reached the target sample size in April, so that was in what was called Transition State 3, and then Transition State 4, we had all the key labour market content included in the questionnaire. We've since been doing an awful lot of analysis to make sure that that is as accurate as possible and making some tweaks and changes as necessary. And then in November 2022, we implemented what was called Knock to Nudge, so Martina mentioned already, going around knocking on, on doors, so you have been part of the sample, we haven't yet received a response either online or by telephone, and therefore please could you respond to the survey or could you give us a phone number, whatever we can do to try and get the respondent to respond by having somebody actually turn up at the household. Then a uh, little later on in April, we expanded this field mode, it was just introduced to wave one to begin with, then it was added to wave two. And as of July last year, we then implemented the final uh, design of the sample, and we started our external peer reviewing at that stage. So going out to a few government departments, a few economic experts, the devolved administrations of Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland, gathering information and feedback from them, conducting some analysis, running through the, the tables so they could compare what the new data looks like compared to what the old data looked like on what they were producing, 
as well as Mark and his team uh, in ONS doing an awful lot of comparisons with the current labour market outputs and statistics that we in ONS produce. And there is a wider activity going on across the rest of ONS about migration statistics and the analysis hub and well-being statistics, all the other things that are sourced from the LFS and APS at the moment that will eventually be sourced from the TLFS in future. An awful lot of analysis to make sure that they are able to produce their statistics and we identify any problems, questions, issues, anything that maybe we needed to look further into and possibly fix. Then in uh, October, we ran the second round of peer reviewing, so updated information, another quarter's worth of data, and we made some final key content changes to the questionnaire. I will come on to them in a minute. Then some final design changes in what was called Transition State 7 in December last year, and that was essentially the end of development. This is what we expected to be delivered from the TLFS as part of the decommissioning. Since then, we've run a third, and as of today, we've been, we're sending out the data files today for the fourth round of external peer review, so an awful lot of activity going on, uh, and obviously we have the conference, so I've added that on the list here as well. The expectation is that uh, we'll make decisions about whether or not the LFS continues or whether the TLFS is good enough to replace it, but as part of that process, looking at things like the return rates, so on the current TLFS, this is the best return rate diagram we have. This focuses on wave one. Uh, waves two, three, four, and five have a fairly similar chart, albeit a little bit lower. The response rates are something like 25%-ish for waves two to five on the TLFS. But uh, the diagram here has looked fairly stable for a good number of cohorts. This only shows a handful of the most recent cohorts in the dark blue in the middle. But if you go back in the history over the, the last few quarters, it's been fairly consistent over the course of time, with a return rate of about 39%, 28% full response and 11% partial response. So a full response is all the questions, as much questionnaire content was answered by the respondent, and a partial response meaning that they haven't necessarily answered all the questions, but they answered enough that it was usable, that we could apply a weight to it, that we could derive their labour market information and actually make use of their response. Of the returns that we've been getting, it's about 93% online and 7% by telephone. So very much meeting the aim of it being online first. And uh, we mentioned the quality indicators earlier on. Uh, I think it was Bob who mentioned them. Looking at the breakdowns by region, so the uh, uh, output area classifications in particular, the, there is a quality metric of having the least the lowest output area classification compared to the output highest output area classification should be within double so that there's not a big disparity in responses between the different classifications and so the target will be within two and at the moment we are within 1.3 so very much within the target that we had set and for the indices of the multiple deprivation again the target is to be with the lowest deprivation versus the highest deprivation to be within double and again, that is within the targets, that is within 1.6 at the moment. So meeting those quality targets that we have for the bias. Now, obviously, it's not the end of development. Still try and improve that as much as we can, make tweaks to the design of the questionnaire, make tweaks to the field work that we have to try and improve that. But at the moment, we are meeting the quality metrics. And then we've been producing the user guidance. And this will become clear why this is important in a moment. But on the website at the moment, uh, very much an amount of very useful user guidance about the background design of the questionnaire, what it looks like, bits about the methodology, bits about the design of the survey, bits about the uh, questionnaire content and how to make use of it and what data sets get produced from it, the uh, sample sizes by local authority across Great Britain, the derivation of the variables uh, which includes some flow charts as well as the mapping documentation from the current LFS to the new TLFS so you can see how the variables or questions have changed between the two surveys and some detailed micro data, uh, metadata information about the contents of the uh, data files so you can see what the new variables look like and what the response categories might look like. All of that's available on the website if you want to go and look at it and in fact we've released a very small update to it today so a few extra bits of information about the derivation of the variables and a few other changes uh, to the mapping document as well. So it's an ongoing development uh, process. I think this is the fourth iteration of changes that we've had. We are expecting to make at least one or two further iterations before we consider it the first full version. And why that's important is it's a key part of assuring the TLFS. So a bunch of different mechanisms that we have available to us to apply quality assurance to the survey. 
So just the project itself, whether we're meeting the timeline for the set, whether we're meeting the objective, whether it's operational, whether it's actually functioning as a survey and matching the quality criteria I mentioned a minute ago. Then you have internal review. So I mentioned our various teams all across ONS, the policy, the demographics, the economic analysis, obviously the labor market is part of economics, various different assurance panels, including a brand new one that's being set up with cross-government representation with a few economic experts as part of this assurance panel at a very senior level. We also have some academic review underway. So uh, we have um, engagements with the ONS fellows so a bunch of uh, academics, a key part of the uh, analytical process to assure that what we're doing is reasonable, accurate, and as complete and, and uh, uh, correct as possible. Uh, methodological review, some consultancies that we've been having with universities such as the University of Southampton, so key people that we work with on a regular basis to make sure that the methodologies and approaches that we're using are as accurate and, and correct as can be. And as I mentioned earlier, some external review, which involves the devolved administrations and obviously the Office for Stats Regulation as well, key part of this conversation, who have been making recommendations. We've been looking into meeting those recommendations as best as possible so that the labor market statistics can hopefully, uh, well, I guess, re-attain their national statistics badge and uh, be considered as uh, accurate and complete as possible. But uh, I'm sure Siobhan will come on to that in a moment. Uh, where, are, where we are with all of this, so very much with the help of uh, Mark and his team doing an awful lot of this analysis themselves, but we are evaluating, evaluating and monitoring the survey itself, so the levels of bias, attrition and response, so very much the operations of the survey directly, uh, ensuring that we can continue to produce the statistics that we need to produce, the regular publications that come out of Bob's team, all the labour market statistics and the other things like well-being that we know are produced on a regular basis. Uh, we're trying to uh, compare the coherence of the TLFS results against the LFS results, obviously, as the key uh, comparison, but we're also trying to compare the LFS with other indicators wherever possible, some changes in, in business surveys or admin data or some anecdotal evidence from the economic experts, any, any information that we can pull together to compare the LFS, the TLFS, which one is more accurate, which one is actually meeting uh, current understanding of the economy. And there is the ongoing external assurance, as I mentioned, there were four stages so far. This will continue, more people are being brought into this. A lot of feedback processes for people to review the data, feedback, what is and isn't working, all the thousand variables in the data set, looking into it as, in as much detail as possible to make sure that it's delivering the, the results that people actually need for uh, policy and delivery. I mentioned earlier, so a lot of this feedback, a lot of the information that we're gathering is leading to change. So I went through all the transition states one, uh, two through seven earlier on. So I've left them on the slide here for, for detail, but I did mention them verbally a minute ago. But we are currently, towards the bottom of the slide, working on delivering what is called transition state eight. So our delivery teams, so that's the design teams, the production teams, the processing team, the interviewing uh, uh, community, all sorts of teams all across ONS trying to uh, deliver what is called transition state eight. At the moment, this is minor question changes, so some small little tweaks we're implementing to make sure that the questionnaire content is as accurate as possible and meeting the definitions that are necessary. And we are planning for the future transition states, so looking towards transition states nine and 10 over the course of the next 12 months or so, focusing on more the design aspect, so implementing data rotation, modularization, and some upgrades to the underlying technology. We use a system called Blaze to collect the um, uh, questionnaire through our interviewer community, trying to upgrade Blaze and other technologies around it as much as we can. So those are still under development. We don't quite know when they're going to deliver at the moment. We're still making plans around all of that. So if I return to the transformation timeline and then add on, last stages towards the right, a couple of new boxes have appeared. So with any luck, right now, this month, the transformed uh, LFS, the TLFS, will meet the quality criteria that we have set, leading towards, in June, with any luck, working to uh, decommission the existing LFS, and then from July onwards, the TLFS would become the primary source of statistics all very much under consideration. So we've been giving a lot of reports through our directors. Our directors have been talking to the directors in the Treasury and the bank and other departments, making sure that this is actually meeting the needs, that this is what the uh, survey needs to look like. Uh, we're awaiting those decisions in the next three or four weeks. So there is always the possibility that they decide this isn't quite there. We still need a bit longer to develop this thing. Maybe we need a few more months. 
but there is also the possibility that they say, yes, we're happy with it, we agree with the timeline, and we're going to go ahead with it. So the current expectation is that July the data goes live, but watch this space, you should hear within a month exactly what the future plans look like. And when I say hearing about future plans, next steps. So uh, on 29th of April, we released our latest update on progress and plans, which touched on some of the things that Martina mentioned and touched on some of the assurance panels and things that I've mentioned already in that article. There will hopefully be another one in a, about a month's time. Uh, there is ongoing engagement with the Office for Stats Regulation about the recommendations they've given and uh, progress in and trying to meet those recommendations, which included things like the user guidance, which are now much more improved compared to what they used to be. Uh, the ongoing analysis and feedback still working through these improvements. The data share right now has a deadline of early June, so hopefully all those feedback processes will come back within the next few weeks, leading into the potential decommissioning decision. If not, we'll still keep talking to people, we'll still get, be getting that feedback. Even if we go live, there will still be potential changes to implement in future. And all of this is going through our project boards and assurance panels, hopefully leading towards the decommissioning decision. And I think... That was everything that I had to present. So unfortunately, no numbers for you, but that is the current situation with the TLFS. A lot of activity of dozens of people across the department, including our interviewers and collection communities, our fieldwork designers, our methodologists, and output teams like Mark and Bob's areas, all part of this process. So thank you very much. Any questions about the TLFS?